right, we're just about to finish problem 72A. In this problem, uh, we're going to do the weighted average method. So our beginning inventory, 20 units at $3 each on May the 1st. So any times three, oops. I don't know why I did the math there, like with a formula, 20 times three is of course $60. Okay, May the 1st is in the bag. Uh, let's have a look at May the 5th. We make a purchase, five units at $3.25 a piece. Five times three twenty-five is of course sixteen twenty-five. And I will make sure that I get all the decimals. So I had twenty at three for sixty. I'm adding to it five at three twenty-five for sixteen and a quarter. Okay, now remember what we do with weighted average. Every time we do a weighted average column, we make sure we know the average cost of what's in our inventory. And how we do, do we do the average cost? Well, we add both of our sides to get a total quantity, a total cost. We divide the totals by each other. 76.25 divided by 25 is $3.05. Not surprising, right? If I have 20 units that are $3 each and only five that are 3.25, my average is gonna wind up closer to $3 than 3.25, and it certainly did in this case. Again, this is, weighted average is a number where you can get all sorts of long, sloppy decimal places, and that's not a problem. I wouldn't be alarmed if that happens. I would just think, okay, that's what's happening here. Uh, we make a sale. We sell 22 units. Okay, so on May, oh, I always forget to check the date, May 13th. We sold how many units? We sold 22 units. What was the average cost? 305. 22 times 305, 67 bucks. Oh, I, I bet you there's some change here, so let's make sure we're rounding properly. I want to go to the penny. 67.10. Uh, leaving us three units at 305, and three times 305. <laughs> I missed the, <laughs> missed the cell. Uh, three times 305 is 915. I can already tell you that. Okay, so there is May 13th. Now we gotta make a couple of purchases. On May 20th, uh, we purchased seven units at $3.55 each. I had three at 305 for 915. I'm now adding to it seven at 355 for 2485, and I got a re-average. So I have a total of 10 units. My total cost here, 915 plus 2485 is $34. 34 divided by 10 means my new weighted average is $3.40. On May 24th, I make another purchase. I purchase five units at 370. Five times 370 is 1850. I had, and maybe I should divide this a bit, I had 10 units at 340. I put the underline under the wrong thing here. See, will that make it go away? Yeah, I want underlines over under here and here, not under there specifically. I had 10 at 340 for 34 bucks. I've added to it five at 370 for uh, 1850. So I have 15 units. 5250 is the total value there. 5250 divided by 15 is three dollars and fifty cents. I did it again per unit. I don't know why I want to put the underline under the one in the middle. Uh, okay, on to our last transaction. This one is a sale. On May 31st, we sell, I think we sell 13 units. Uh, let's see, oops. 
There we go. We sell 13 units for $7.99. We did sell 13. So we sell 13 units, but not for $7.99 is the price. The cost is $3.50. We got to say, which units did we sell? Well, they're all the same. 13 times $3.50 is 45.50 leaving us two at 350 two times 350 is seven bucks that's it we are complete this is done deal so our sales revenue for the period did not change from fifo or life our sales revenue was 279.65 our cost of goods sold, that did change. It's the sum of our cost of goods sold transactions, right? It's a 11260. Sales minus COGS equals our gross profit. Our gross profit here was 167.05. Okay, one last thing to do, and that's the journal entry. And the journal entries are really similar to the ones we've already done. So let me just copy paste this one over. And we'll I'll show you a change. We got to do the journal entries for May 24th. Well, that didn't change. Any purchase of inventory doesn't affect our um, FIFO, LIFO weighted average. Like there won't be any difference between them. So debit inventory, credit AP for 1850 for our May 24th purchase. Our May 31st sale, the sales revenue is still the same. Doesn't matter what method we use. Sales revenue is still, we sold 13 units for $7.99 each. And 13 times 7.99 is 103.87. However, our cogs and in inventory is different. You can see it was 45.70 for FIFO, that's in red. 46.35 for LIFO, that's in blue. And for weighted average method, you can see it's 45.50. So uh, let's punch in our weighted average amount. Again, I said that was 45.50. Let's do this in green. I'll scratch this one out. For weighted average, it is 45.50 debit and credit. Debit COGS 45.50, credit inventory 45.50. So there we have it. You can see FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average produce very similar uh, answers for journal entries, except for the cost of goods sold portion. Of course, cost of goods sold affects our inventory, but that's really why we do these different methods there. Uh, uh, they're meant to affect our inventory valuation and that change in inventory value changes our cost of goods sold, but it won't affect our inventory purchases or our sales. All right, that's it for this problem, 7-2-A. Stay tuned for the next one.